Good afternoon. Let's start off with a Hail Mary, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey guys, at home today, we are on chapter 11 of our RCIA program, and we're going to go over the sacraments, a kind of a intro into what the sacraments are, where they come from, and what they do. So what are the seven sacraments? They are baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, confession, which is also known as reconciliation or penance, anointing of the sick, matrimony, and holy orders. Let's go over those one more time. The seven sacraments. They are baptism, confirmation, Eucharist, confession, anointing of the sick, matrimony, and holy orders. Now, the first three sacraments are the most significant. We call those the sacraments of initiation, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. Think of when you join some kind of organization or some kind of club or some kind of program, you usually have to go through some kind of initiation. Maybe it's a training. Maybe it's some kind of welcoming. Well, in order to become a full member of Christ's body, Jesus pours out his blood upon us through the sacraments of initiation. We are not a full member of the church until we receive all three sacraments, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. Now look at the order of them for a second. What seems a little strange? Most people we know, they're baptized as an infant, they receive their first communion in second grade, and they're confirmed when they are in high school. But notice how confirmation in this list comes before the Eucharist. Why is that? Well, in the early church, confirmation was given usually around the same time as baptism. In fact, some parts of the world today, infants who are baptized receive confirmation. This happens in the Eastern Catholic churches and some parts of, parts of Latin America. Confirmation is that sacrament which strengthens baptism. So we in the United States are used to getting the confirmation sacrament, sacrament of confirmation in high school. But the popes have asked that we move confirmation earlier. So it's kind of my dream that one day uh, we would receive the sacrament of confirmation at the same time as First Communion around seven or eight years old, second or third grade. In fact, a few of the dioceses, a few of the bishops in the United States have already done that. They moved the Eucharist to be, I mean, they moved confirmation to be the same time as the sacrament of First Communion because our kids need that grace of the Holy Spirit before they receive high school, before they go through the, the battle of entering the secular world um, and all the temptations that come with it. The next two sacraments are called the sacraments of healing. This is confession and anointing of the sick. So an anointing of the sick is the sacrament we receive when we are in danger of death. It's the last sacrament we receive, and it prepares us to meet Jesus after we die. It unites our suffering. Often when we're dying, we're going through some kind of bodily torment, bodily suffering. And Christ's cross, his suffering on the cross, is united to our suffering. So that our suffering becomes uh, efficacious, it becomes meritorious, it has takes on meaning. The other sacrament of healing is confession. This is when I go to the priest and Christ forgives my sins through the priest. My soul is healed and it's made new like it was on the day of baptism. Finally, the last two sacraments are the sacraments of service. This is holy orders and matrimony. Holy orders that is that sacrament that deacons priests and bishops receive in order to serve God and to serve his people. Matrimony is that sacrament of marriage that husband and wives receive and enter into in order to serve each other, to serve their children, and to serve the church. So both these sacraments are called sacraments of service because they're for others, serving others and serving God.